Federation orders were proceeding at top warp speed to the planet Ardana, where the only known source of Xenite exists. Okay. This looks like uh, Vulcan. Stratos, Captain. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's most for I hear its art forms are incomparable. Yes, art is the population's chief occupation. Oh, Spock's gonna love this place. Ooh, what's this shot? Whoa! Cool. I like it. Crane shot? I like it. Yeah. Or someone on someone's shoulders. Oh, well, that's the miners, I'm guessing. Oh, no, not a lasso. Just go like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not even tight enough to go around them. It's five-year mission to explore strange new worlds. All right, man. Only four left. Here we go. I'm going to seriously doubt that the Star Trek movies have this intro, so I'm going to try to savor this as much as I can. You know, back then they didn't incorporate any music or anything from the original OP when they would make a movie. When they finally see the Enterprise, you hear a little hint of the theme song. I guarantee it's going to be something like that. I'm calling it right now. You just hear it a little bit. Ooh, story by two people. Oh, God, it's Judd Taylor again. We're here by permission of your government council on an emergency mission. Move on, Captain. Oh! Whoa, dropkick! Yes! Here we go. We haven't seen a good, like, double fight like this in a while. Oh. Oh, just had a shover. Come on, Spock. Whoa! Put her on the Hell's Gate. Come on. <laughs> they must be from the Cloud City. Surrender or we'll fire! Oh! Do you need to give him a chance? I'm Plasis, High Advisor of the Planet Council. My regrets for the unpleasantness of your welcome to Ardana was rather warm. Who are they? A small group of troglite malcontents. All the other troglites are completely dominated by them. For what purpose? To force the council to meet their demands. So it's a labor dispute. They're on strike. I would suggest that you and First Officer Spock be our guests on Stratus. I really hope they like flip the story and this guy in like the Cloud City actually gets portrayed as the bad guy. You know, instead of just like Oh, these laborers want rights. Aren't they bad? They want more wages. Can you believe it? They want livable wages. Unbelievable. Nice. I think the uh, Cloud City of Bespin was inspired by this. From Empire Strikes Back. Oh, God. A blonde woman. Whoa. Oh, God. Here, here we go. My daughter, Droxine. Captain James Kirk. And First Officer Spock. I have never before met a Vulcan, sir. Nor I a work of art, madam. <laughs> w. Riz! We have some of the finest of our various art forms assembled here. What? I think it was like something stabbed in the wall, that thing right next to him. Why do they destroy art forms? Art means nothing to the disruptors. This is the only form they understand. Mm, okay, you're right. The disruptors must be mad to attack two such charming strangers. Captain Kirk and his very attractive officer will feel that we're responsible for their injuries. Very attractive officer. This is like a rare oh, scene with no characters from the Enterprise. Secure him to the rostrum. Is he jumping off? Oh! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. This troubled planet is a place of the most violent contrast. Those who receive the are totally separated from those who shoulder the burden. I think that uh that one up to the guy falling off the mountain. <laughs> they definitely one up to Here we go. Very attractive first officer. Seems that Vulcans are fascinatingly different in many ways. Wait, what the hell? 
Who's that? Broken eyes are very discerning, too. Oh, is that the same woman? So she must have snuck up here. <laughs> what kind of knife is that? It's like a mix between a flat iron and a knife. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're done. You had it right to his neck already. You again. You answer some questions. And I'll let you out. No! Damn it! You only take a mate once every <laughs> seven years. The seven year cycle is biologically inherent in all Vulcans. It's nice to see that continuity. And is there nothing that can disturb that cycle? Extreme feminine beauty is always disturbing, madam. Fuck. Ah, he got cut off. Am I intruding, Captain? Fauna, Droxine. I just called you in here. <laughs> the Stratos is for advisors and studiers. What would troglites do here? Live. She's basically like, you're all too poor and stupid. What would you do here? It's like, oh my God. Here in Stratos, we have completely eliminated violence. <laughs> no, you haven't. This episode is extremely based. It's all about class inequality. But I won't stand by while someone is tortured. You realize, of course, that the Sentinels could remove you. But Starfleet Command won't take kindly to having either rays or physical force used against one of its command personnel. Starfleet doesn't give a shit. It's funny you say that. I actually have Starfleet right here. Yeah, that's fine. You will return to your ship at once, or I shall contact your Starfleet Command myself and report your interference with this planet's government. Yeah, I mean, he's clearly an ass, but, like, he, he is kind of in the right. He's like, you know, you, you came here to pick something up. You can't just come here and topple our entire government because you don't like it. Yeah, I mean, this is the way things are here. We have an upper society, lower society. Uh, Kill sorry. I have to go straight to killing him. I mean, I don't think the society is asking anything of the Enterprise crew. I think Kirk's just struggling with this, you know, the morals of what's happening down here. Look, I've checked my findings thoroughly. Their intellect ratings are almost 20% below average. They're all the same species. But obviously, the ancestors of those who live on Stratus remove themselves from the environment of the mind. Oh, wow. It emits a odorless, invisible gas that retards the intellectual functioning of the mind. It's basically like getting black lung. Like miners getting black lung. Okay, so that's the that's issue what they're with the mining. people on the ground. So they're doing all this work mining it, and it's making them, you know, unhealthy, and then they don't, like, get cared for or anything. This mask automatically eliminates all substance injurious to humanoid life. <laughs> Are they going to be like, give this to your, the miners? No. No. <laughs> I would like to offer them a supply of these filter masks in exchange for the Xenite consignment. I'm sorry, Captain. I want them to keep working. Your Federation orders do not entitle you to defy local governments. This communication has ended. <laughs> <laughs> That's the equivalent of the, uh, how much your mother? Good day, sir. There's a dangerous gas in the mines. Also a nice little touch that they actually give her like a prisoner's uniform here instead of, you know, he beams in and she's just wearing the same clothes. It's a nice little extra touch. Gas from Xenite? It's hard to believe that something which is neither seen nor felt can do so much harm. Wait, I like how he was able to beam right into this prison cell. <laughs> you must trust me. If you don't, millions of people will die, a whole planet. You have to convince us all these people to wear a mask. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. My draw. Lana. Anchor. You have returned. And I've brought with me a hostage. Oh, I like that. Their own version of a... Oh, you... Come on, Vana. I'm not such a fool. And you are a fool. These masks will free you just as soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I wouldn't wear that mask either. <laughs> I understand. Holding me won't help you. My men will still come for that Xenite <laughs> I think this is one of those instances where they tried to make something look like futuristic, but it's just like, it, you would have been better off just with a normal gas mask. He just can't catch a break this episode. 
How long do you plan on keeping me here? Until we have help in the mines. And our homes are in the clouds. It's quite a while. Longer than I expect. <laughs> <laughs> The dust flying everywhere. <laughs> Packet sand. Uh, uh. Hold on these coordinates. Locate the high advisor and beam him to these coordinates immediately. Oh, okay. Location, location. Uh, they're really uh, fleshing out everything the transporter can do. You can go find an unwilling person, beam him to somewhere else. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Spock would not behave so. Leave here at once. Go to your music. That was oddly, like, 80 yard. Just Are that we one so line? sure of our methods that we never question what we do? All right. All right, Doc said i What's her name? <laughs> it just sounded like a chemical. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Energizing. Oh, oh got, got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> Perhaps you need closer exposure. Fill that container. Oh, he's going to make him huff the gas. You too, Vala. <laughs> so, dig! <laughs> Equal rights, get in there. It has been over an hour since your last communication. Your orders are to stand by. Standing Jesus by Christ. Here. However, let me remind you, we have only five hours left. He just closed, he just hung up on him. I will take no more orders. One more step and I'll kill you. Yes, Captain, you were right. It's taking effect. Oh, this guy's gonna die, isn't he? With Morte as you are with a phaser. Both will kill. <laughs> Kirk thought he was gonna give him one. <laughs> so it'd be a, a, an even duel, but no. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was gonna toss him one for a... Uh, nope. Uh, oh, oh, there you go. Enterprise! Enterprise, Spock here. They'll kill each other, help us! Okay. Queens to Queens Bishop 3. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're clearly not Captain Kirk. No, I never said I was. I just need help. Oh, nice. Okay. I like any time they get beamed up in a different position. All right. Grab the headlock. Please don't tell me that just killed her. Did Spock just yell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the demonstration was quite a success. But I'm guessing she's not dead because they would have made like a bigger deal. I don't like filters or even masks. I like the word protector much better. Oh, there you go. Good idea from dioxide. Less technical, therefore less accurate, but perhaps more generally descriptive of the function. The captain will have his Z night, just as I agree. No, nah, she's fine. I shall go to the mines. I no longer wish to be limited to the clouds. Your planet like this one? No, Vulcan is quite different. Someday I should like to visit it. We get one more scene? Ah! Okay, what? Okay. Well, hey, man. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be surprising to you, but uh, this is definitely one of my favorite episodes of the season. Um, I love this episode. Um, I will say, just right off the bat, I mean, we're not going to get too crazy or into it or anything, but it, the, the plot here is inherently political. So, like, we're going to talk about the politics of the episode, you know, like, it'd be kind of weird to just ignore it. But having basically Kirk be in the middle of a labor dispute between these miners and then the higher up wealthy class of the planet. Uh, it was great. It was something I never thought we would see um, in this show. And then the fact that both sides ended up having, you know, kind of villainous elements about them. Like when we first started the episode, as I said, I was worried like, oh, no, the miners are just going to be portrayed as like these, you know, evil laborers holding hostages. Uh, and then they flipped it. And then like the guys in the, cl you know, the, the clouds and the uh, the head guy was like shown to be super evil and torturing her and everything. But then when Kirk goes back down to save him, then they turn on him and they, you know, they're not all good as well. So it did a great job, like really giving depth to these characters that we're only going to see in this episode. Um, and then I think the daughter character ended up like being the best, like even though she's on 
what I would consider the wrong side. You know, she's giving little nuggets of knowledge and like, you know, good lines throughout the episode. Also, of course, I'm, I love her whole storyline with Spock. I mean, that, you know, that's always going to get me. Um, but then even at the end when she's talking to her dad and she's like, do we never question the way we do things? And it's like, all right. Uh, you know, and she decides to leave the city at the end to go down and, and into the mines. So, yeah, I really enjoyed, even though it was over the top and ridiculous and it did drag a little in the middle. Overall, I appreciated the message. It wasn't too on the nose. It was, you know, it was well represented on both sides. The characters were deep enough. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, I think you said all the thoughts I can have and more. Uh, I do love... Uh you know, the upper class, lower class type deal and like how there's like faults on both sides. And I do appreciate how, like, I just, it's not black and white. It's unlike the episode a few episodes ago where it's literally black and white. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I thought that was neat. Um, another new uh, laugh out loud moment where the, the guy just commits suicide. <laughs> oh, that was great. Uh, just fantastic. Um, and it's been a while, but we got a very good action sequence in the opening with uh, Kirk and Spock fighting off uh, the troglites. I thought that was great. But, uh, I mean, I, uh, this might be another rewatch for me, but uh, right now it's, I'm not thinking of it on any list right now, but I just do love uh, how uh, this brings in... Uh, Elements, I mean, even today, where like that, the question of like upper class, lower class, and all the problems that happen with it, and the moralities, and you know, getting involved and when not to get involved, and so I do appreciate that. But uh, I don't know, this this one's gonna sit with me for a bit. Yeah, and I think that uh, you know the story too. I mean, this is just pure irony, of course. Not that they could have meant this, but the whole st the whole second element of the story of them the miners are getting sick from this uh, this gas from the the thing that they're mining that they can't see but is harming them, and then Kirk has to make them believe not only that there's something that's harming them that they can't see, but also to protect themselves with a mask. I mean, the parallels are just pretty ironic in that sense too. Uh, even though the mask did look <laughs> just ridiculous when Kirk was wearing it. <laughs> um, but I even like at the end, again, another line with the daughter character. I'm gonna, I'm trying to find her name here so I, I don't have to keep calling her Dioxide. But, um, the, um, daughter character, when she's like, oh, let's not call them filters or, or masks, let's call them protectors. And it's like, and Spock is like, well, that's technically not correct, but I think it does, you know, kind of... Um, talk about the uh, functionality of it and it's so true it's like the messaging of something can really go a long way into how people will react or uh, you know treat something and I think the, that's just another little nugget thrown in there there was so much just like good little nuggets in the script um, I did feel it sometimes the episode felt a little bit like soap opera ish like a little bit over the top but me personally you know I love that like give me that all day you know um, so yeah uh, the only thing I would really say was a negative for me um, was just that it did drag a little bit in the middle and you know kind of told us like when they were figuring out what was going on it wasn't like the quickest thing in the world but look we're, we're broken records at this point with the pacing the whole show needs better pacing like i'm sure we'll talk about that in the wrap up um you know of the whole series so no reason to really complain about it every episode but that's really the only negative i would even have you, you know what no here's a thought maybe it flowed a lot better when there was commercials when it, you took a break from it yeah. but maybe Maybe watching it just like with no commercials, maybe it just doesn't flow the same as it would if there was commercials. I, I never thought about that until now. True. Hmm. True. Uh, another thing, I will appreciate the set design of this uh, Bespin-like city. I'm just uh, scrolling through the episode right now. Like when they first go up and uh, meet the uh, bearded guy, like everything looks very unique. It doesn't look anything was reused. I mean, I think on the, the planet surface, like uh, we've, we've seen those rocks before, those, you know, those big fucking rocks. But like, I was looking through like the hallways and like uh, the room of this city and like, it all looks very unique just for this episode. So kudos to all of that. Yeah great set design and then even like the prison cell scene and stuff they really went through a lot of effort it almost made me start to think like did they already have this set from something else like with how detailed it was um but yeah i enjoyed that the daughter's name was droxine d-r-o-x-i-n-e that uh played by diana ewing she did a great job charlene charlene polite or Polette played vanna she did a great job and then jeff Corey was uh Pla Plasis or Plasis? 
Um, I thought they were all really, good. Yeah. The sto the story did really kind of heavily rely on these guest characters, and if they were weak, the episode could have been much weaker. So, uh, yeah, I think this is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, I'm, ex I'm excited to see what people have to say about it. Um, and I, I think that's all I got. You got any? Oh, I also I will say. Alternative Factor, I think, still has the best moment of the guy falling off the mountain because that was just so abrupt and, like, why did it happen? Why did he fall off the side of the mountain? At least in this, like, the guy has a reason to run and jump off the, the edge, you know, but in that, it was, I still to this day, I'm like, why did he fall off the side of the mountain? Yeah, but this one, I kind of forgot they were on a cloud city for a second, but it's someone it shows his, his body falling all the way down. Oh, I just lost it. Yeah, that <laughs> shot was great, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I, I always appreciate the creativeness of bringing in real-world type issues in a futuristic sense because there's so many lazy forms of media today where it's just so on the nose and so obvious. It's like, oh, this is, you know, like, like people watch TV, watch movies to get away from the fucking horrors of the real world. So, but if you can trick them somehow... <laughs> to tell a good story and sneak in those real horrible aspects of the world and maybe make them think different without being so on the nose. I think um, it comes I think it uh, comes down to two main things. It's it's being able to do it like you're saying, like a big part of it is sometimes the, the subtlety is a big part of it, but also too not interrupting or weakening the story of the episode. Like you could strip away all of the actual uh political stuff or messaging or anything from this and the episode itself still works and is entertaining to me as to where there are certain things where like oh wow you know i really appreciate that message but if you take away the message what's left of the episode so to oh, be able to yeah. do both i think is is really important um, and i think that's also a big part of what's missing from stuff today is like they put the message first over the, the quality of the stuff it seems a lot of times there's nothing wrong with putting messages in your stuff whether the I agree or disagree personally with what the message is, I can still be entertained by it either way. That's why the entertainment should come first. And I think that's the problem. Rather than people get caught up in like, the message shouldn't be in there at all. It's like, well, no, they're the artist. They can do whatever they want. It's their thing, but still make it good despite the message. So uh, that, that's just my, my take on it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, still have a good narrative story. Still have, put effort into all those other pieces as well, you know. Don't just have like a boring, you know, oh, so-and-so is bad and put no effort anywhere else. Or just like, you know, yeah. like copy and paste a news article and just put it like, like, here's my show. Yeah, for sure. Well, this could definitely be a longer discussion. But at the end of the day, let us know what you guys think of uh, this episode. This episode was called the cloud minders yeah all right well let us know what you guys think and uh if it's your first time here make sure to subscribe be part of the target audience watch all of star trek along with us absolutely that'll do it for us here at the ta i'm alex this is josh we are the ta where content's made for absolutely everybody but we think it's specifically made for us but hopefully for you guys especially thank you very much we'll see you